Good to get everyone, Shiv here. So, July 22nd came and went, and we got the announcement for the Grand Tournament. Yes, that's what they're calling it, the Grand Tournament, rather than the Archer Tournament. Which it was funny, because Eric Dodds tripped over his own self during that whole event. I found that funny as hell. Um, so, we got to learn a few things about what's coming in it. It's a 130-card pack expansion. Thank you for proving me right. Which, by the way, this means most likely what we're going to get is in the fall, the Lich King. And probably Death, or not in the fall, but in winter, Lich King, Death Knight kind of thing in a PvE expansion. Unless they decide to do another pack expansion for Christmas. That would be actually really unprecedented for them, and it might be a little bit pushing too much. But, it'd be cool as shit. Alright, so much like GVG, 130 cards. So, they got to show off... Um, how some of these cards are going to work. We got to watch Amaz, uh, Trump, and um, Firebat play with them and kind of see how they were going to work functionality-wise and things of that nature. And we got to see probably the most epic fail by Trump ever. Seriously, Trump, you should have known better. All right. So let's take a look at the 15 cards that they gave us. All right, Main of the Lake. Four mana, two six, your hero power cost one. Not one less, one. Meaning you cannot stack this and get it down to free hero power. This is also a design thing that uh, I know me and Nox have toyed with a few times. It's actually really cool though. Uh, it's not overly impactful, two six, meh. But it's going to have enough life that it's going to stay on the board and your opponents are going to have to kind of trade a couple times to get in there. And they'll have to really evaluate how important you having cheaper hero power is going to be. And in some cases, it's absolutely not really going to matter that much. But in the case of Mage, it's really going to matter. And we'll get to that a little bit later on. Alright. Next up. Tuscar Totemic! I love this guy, he's so awesome. Alright, so. Battle Cry, summon any random totem. Well, there's a new totem that they're going to be uh, introducing, which, by the way, I will be showing you that here. Uh, as well as all the ones we already know. So, in the footage, we got to see that new totem get summoned by this guy. We've got to see... Um, uh, Flame Tongue's getting summoned, but I mean, there's a lot of totems out there. So, I mean, you might get a Mana Tide. Hey, cool. You know? Awesome card draw. But... Yeah. yeah. Alright. You, you, you might kind of whiff. <laughs> but its stat line's pretty good. Alright, Thunder Bluff Valiant. Inspire. Inspire is their new mechanic that they're introducing to the game. I like this. I think this is actually a really good mechanic because it means you actually have to have a new value for some of these new cards. Like, okay, how much of a threat is this card because of this? All right. Inspire. Give your totems plus two attack. Ho okay, so basically every time I summon a totem as a shaman while this is in play, I'm giving them plus two attack. Quartermaster, you ain't got shit on this bitch. I'm going to tell you that right now. All right. So, we already saw one that brings in random totems. Now you got something that's buffing those totems. This is stuff that me and Nox have been saying, like, a bit ago. We actually did a whole special on this shit. And I'm glad to see stuff like this. It's a 3-6. Okay, so it's got uh, water elemental stats for one mana more. But it's got a repeatable effect that you can keep spamming out, and I like that. Now, here's the question. If you get two of those on the board and you do that, will that translate into a plus four for your totems? The answer is yes. So, good luck pulling that off, but yeah. All right, speaking of Inspire, the Lowly Squire. This is our first introduction to it uh, on the stream thing that they did. So, one mana. Cool. I can play it early. Inspire, gain plus one attack. Okay, I like this. Because literally my turn one could be this, and if I don't have a two mana play, I could just hero power, boom, I have a two two to attack. Or to trade. Lots of options there. Um, 
So I like that. I definitely see this uh, getting one hell of a of a play in say like Paladin. Hint hint. Because you've seen the the recent development with the new aggro white weenie paladins that are out there. Uh, this would fit into that perfectly. So perfectly. So, yeah, I like this. I like this card a lot. It opens up some early game options for a lot of classes. Alright, next up we have is Effigy. Alright. Secret, when a friendly minion dies, summon a random minion with the same cost. So basically, this is Recombobulator the Secret. Again, this is a concept that we came up with on Mega Church Workshop as well. I'm actually kind of happy to see this. Like, everything that we've been coming up with in theory crafting and may have made the show and may not have made the show is actually coming to fruition, and it's like, wow, that's great. So, I like this card. This is just fucking OP as shit. Or it could backfire miserably, right? Yeah. Let, let, let's really think about this. Okay, so you play Effigy, and you play Mirror Image. Congratulations, sir. You're going to get back a fucking Wisp or a Target Dummy. All right. Draenei Totem Carver. Four mana for 4-4. Four, four. That seems pretty bland and vanilla, right? Battlecry, gain plus one, plus one for each friendly totem. Okay, because this card exists, this is actually really scary. Alright, this is obviously better than the Fireguard Destroyer many times over. Reason why is Fireguard Destroyer was completely random stat, so he could actually, like, just whiff or be too high and then die to a big game hunter. Uh, this one, however, you kind of have a little bit of control of how big you want this to get. That's actually kind of cool. That makes this an instant threat. Um, it's also a concept that I know me and Knox worked on in another previous episode, too. So, I mean, this is... It, it, it was a solid design back then, and it's still a solid design now. And I'm glad to see it uh, actually coming into the game. Okay, Ball of Spiders. We just had one car that was a solid design, and then we get this absolute utter trash. Then again, do we really want to give Hunters any more power? No, we don't. Six mana to summon three Web Spinners at once. Okay. So, I get why it's so expensive. It has to be. But it's too expensive, guys. Really, it is. Um, Ball of Spiders with the one ones, that's crap. You can't combo synergy this worth a damn. Um, unless you basically play this out turn six, and then the next turn you literally play out double scavenging hyena, and then you know sack these out and get them all big and burly. Other than that, it's a garbage card. It really is. Sure, you put this down, and the likelihood of you having you know a low cost beast on the board so you can double kill command the next turn. Yeah, sure, why not? But this is no, this is too expensive. It really is. I, I would, I, I very rarely have I ever went and said, "Hey, your costing has, is too expensive for something." The Blizzard, with a few exceptions, but this one here, no. You look at Muster for Battle. Okay, I will give you the fact that those tokens don't give you shit, but the fact that there's something you can play with it to turn them into nine damage, right? What do you got that's going to turn these into 9 damage that you're so worried about? Well, Shiv, I mean, you're overlooking the possible uh, play of using it with Starving Buzzard. Really? This is... Alright. Unfortunately, Starving Buzzard, because it does exist, is, makes some of the cool shit that they can do with Hunter absolutely stupid. Because everybody remembers what Unleash the Hounds and the original Starving Buzzard did. Alright. So, I mean, they have to be very, very careful whenever they're introducing stuff when it comes to Hunter, because we already know that Hunter can break the fucking meta. Alright. Kodo Rider. Another Inspire. Six mana for a 3-5. A 
That seems like a horrible stat, but read its effect. Inspire. Summon a 3-5 War Kodo. You know what? I'll play this over Gaslo any day of the week. Alright, so we've already seen the um, Main of the Lake. So that means for one mana you get a 3-5 as well. So you got Main of the Lake in, boom. Turn 7 comes around, you play this, and Hero Power, boom, congratulations, you got two three fives for 7 mana. That's not bad. It's not bad at all. Where it gets even more interesting is later game plays in Mage, and uh, we're going to kind of cover that here in a little bit. Alright. Oh, just a quick note, those uh, War Kodos are beasts. Alright. Totem Golem! Yes, here's one of the new totems that's coming out. And this guy is just, oh my god, value 9,000. Two mana for a fucking 3-4. I'll take that. I'll take that all day long. All right? Normally, turn two is a little rough period um, when playing Shaman. You're almost entirely, like, going to play either Totem from your hero power. You're going to do... Uh, Maybe a knife juggler if you coined out uh, the haunted creeper first, or you're going to play a haunted creeper. I mean, when it comes to two, there's not really all that great of options. But now here you got something that you know you can actually play out. Okay, yeah, it's got an overload, but big whoopee fucking shit. There's mechanics to deal with that, and mechanics that benefit from it. So why not? Plus, let's not forget it helps out that totem carver. And I would like to point out, finally, there's a card that makes Totemic Might worth playing. As a defensive option, just saying. Alright. Caldera Drake. Six mana for a 6-6. Six, six. Yes, here we go with the scenarios I've been leading to. Okay. You can use your hero power any number of times. Why is this important? Well... It opens up some interesting possibilities for Mage. Alright, I'm going to start with the, the most obvious, alright? If this is not taken care of, and it's turn 10, and it's a whole new turn for that Mage, congratulations, that Mage can now Pyroblast you to the face, clicking his hero power and dragging it to your face 10 individual times. Which, by the way, is annoying as fuck. But, it's still kind of cool. I like it. I think it's actually really nifty. Um, but it gets a lot more value when you start looking, you know, with, you know, Maiden of the Lake and this in combination. And if you can pull off this new legendary that's go we're going to be talking about here in a bit, you get even more value. Alright? Or any of the other Inspire cards that are going to be got value. Alright? Like, seriously, Inspire Mage is going to be like this new archetype. It's going to be combo-y, it's going to be bursty with minions, it's going to be like a combination of zoo, tempo, and fucking, um, a, a, I, I'm honestly going to say a little bit of fucking oil rogue in, in some weird aspects, alright? It's going it, to, mage is going to become like this universal adaptive class, which Caldera Drake really fits into. Not to mention the fact this is a fucking dragon, guys, alright? There's already mechanics designed in the game to benefit from having a dragon in hand. So, Corruptor, definitely gonna play into this. Azure Drakes, sure, why not? That's coming in as well. I like this. I like this card a lot. I see so much potential with it that... I, I think we're gonna see, like, some huge meta shifts. And Mage... It, Mage has always been a really good class, but I think this might push Mage to initially be a very dominant class. But we'll see. We have to see the rest of the set before we can honestly make these predictions. But this guy right here, that's a powerhouse 9000. Holy shit. That guy is badass. Alright. Moving on to the next card that I was referencing in the previous one. The Nexus Champion, Sarad. 5 mana for 4-5. Inspire. Add a random spell to your hand. Now do you understand why I'm saying Mage has some potential here, alright? You got a neutral that reduces um, the cost of a hero power. You've got a class 1 that allows you to use your hero power as many times as you want. And then you get a legendary 
that basically gives you a card, a spell, to your hand from any class. The amount of possibilities that are available with this are pretty fucking insane, all right? But again, this is RNG. There's a lot of RNG, guys. So being able to manage through that RNG might be crucial. But you really are creating hand advantage from using your hero power. And only spending one mana to do that is so efficient. I mean, Warlocks would be like, oh, that's bullshit. All right, so I mean, this guy, I honestly think this is going to be like the go-to 5-drop in a lot of classes, but it's not going to be anywhere near as effective as it will be in Mage. Like, this guy damn near should already have blue tinting on him, because that's how effective he is in that class. Alright? But he, he's just a powerhouse. And in fact, he's got Chill Win Yeti stats for one mana more. Fuck it, hey, you can't ask for any better value than that. You really can't. I, I think people are definitely going to be playing around with the mage, and this is going to be like the first legendary they're either hoping for or will craft from this new set. Alright. Lock and load. Yes, because... Fuck it. Let's do something new with Hunter. I like this concept. I can't tell you how much I like this concept. One of the biggest design deficiencies in Hunter is their ability to basically have any hand advantage. Right? Be suck dick. True fact. Uh, most of their spells are either slightly overcosted or slightly meh. So you really have to work like with multiple cards, which ends up reducing hand advantage. This is never good. But hold up now. We're giving hunters the ability to create some weird combo situations because it tells a story. Holy shit. There's a lot of cool things that can happen with here. Wait, no, not not as much as you think because unfortunately it's only hunter stuff you're getting. Now it's not just spells that are gonna you're gonna get off this, just spells, minions, secrets, um, weapons. So I mean there's definitely some options. Um But hunters have a zero drop card, they have two one drop cards they have a slew of two drop cards that they can easily use to power through this thing now we also did not get to see this but what happens if you lock and load twice do you get double the card draws that would be interesting that would be interesting i mean i want you to think about that so you get one off the from all right so you play lock and load you play a second lock and load you get one draw then let's say you play a um, Hunter's Mark, right? That's three. You play a Arcade Shot. That's five. You play a, uh, let's just say a Tracking. That's seven. You pull another low-cost spell, like another Hunter's Mark. That's nine. And it's all outside of deck design. So, yeah, that's kind of interesting. And it'll lead to some really interesting videos. Will it, will it effectively, like, change the course of Hunter design? No, not really. I mean, the more cards you add to a set, inevitably will mean lock and load will do some stuff. Now, it is possible for you to play lock and load, play a spell, and get another lock and load. I just want to point that out there right now. Okay? That is possible. What we could one day end up seeing is like turn 10 play, lock and load, right? To a hunter's mark, gets another lock and load, plays that, okay? So now you're at six total mana used. Actually, no, four total mana used, right? Goes and plays uh, another Hunter's Mark. Boom. Gets two cards, one of which is another Lock and Load. So you play that one. So you now have three Lock and Loads in play, right? And you're drawing three every spell. And congratulations, you still have four mana available. It's very unlikely, but man, that video would be fucking amazing and trolled and worthy every single time. Alright? Even if the guy lost, it'd still be trolling worthy. 
Alright. So, I don't know if this will fix a lot of those things, but it'll offer some a unique flavor and fun for the class. I can't wait to see other stuff they're getting, because that ball of spider shit was garbage. Alright. Fallen Hero! Yes, because mages needed even more reasons to go, oh god, fuck this shit. Alright, so, Fallen Hero. Your hero power deals one damage extra a turn. Okay, so, basically, for two mana, you get a 3-2, and you now are basically have a hunter hero power that you can target. This is basically like a, a Steam Weedle Sniper slash, you know, Shadow Form for fucking... mages so i mean it's 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 really kind of scary especially when you consider some of the other stuff that's out there the caldera drake and throwing in maiden of the lake so here's what scares me here all right so the drake is out the maiden is out it's turn 10 you play fallen hero bam that leaves you eight mana congratulations that's 16 damage to the face Right? Um, and this isn't really all that uncommon. We've seen that burst stuff a whole bunch. Now, if you already had one in play and you could get another one in play, did I say 16? Yeah. Add one more or add eight more to that. So that's 24 damage. That's. Ooh. It gets scary, guys. It gets scary real quick. Like, you know, warriors are sitting there going, but I have armor! And Mage is like, I don't care. You know, just using hero power. That's that's kind of cool. But scary at the same time. Alright, Frost Giant. Well, we Giants have been part of, like, Hearthstone since, like, day one. You know, Molten Giants, Mountain Giants, Sea Giants. Those are, like, the core ones. Fell Reaver technically is not a giant, but is a giant, let's be honest. Um... We got Clockwork Giant, which sees, like, absolutely no play. And then, you know, here we got Frost Giant. Now, I like some things about this, and then I, I, I recognize there's, there's going to be a certain problems with it. Alright, what I like about it. The fact that you do not need to have this in your hand in order to get a reduction on it. Alright, this could be in your deck, and you're just, you know, playing around, do-do-do-do, using your hero power, boom, 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 getting reduction on it. And then it comes out at a reduced cost automatically. Okay, so that's cool. I like that. What I don't like about this is people are always going to try to look for how to get this out as quickly, as feasibly as possible. And because it uses your hero power, really, <laughs> you're kind of screwed on that. All right? The best you're looking at is most probably like turn six. Turn 5 if you use the coin to hero power, but let's be fucking honest. Who the fuck is ever going to coin hero power? That is like the most scrub play ever. And then by the time you got this out, trying to go for that value, you'd get screwed. But if you try to think of it in terms other than that, like, hey, this isn't really an 8-8 an eight, eight for 10, or this isn't like, you know, Mountain Giant, this isn't like that, this isn't like that, you know, this is just a high value minion playing it later on at a reduced cost. I, I like that line of thinking, it works a lot better. Now, obviously, because Mages and Caldera Drake, blah, 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 yeah, we already know the scenario. That, that, that series of combinations is just scary for its p fucking potential. So, all in all, I think this is actually a decent card. Um... But I, I do fear that it might end up the way of the Clockwork Giant, unfortunately. Alright. Last but not least, Sky Captain Crag. Seven mana for a 4 6. And he's a pirate! Arr! Okay, so his ability is Charge! Now, I nobody's brought this up. Is that a just a clever word usage or is it going to be you know like a whole new type of charge like you know it's charged with a whirlwind no is it a charge that can't be stopped by a taunt okay that would be scary considering he's on a flying mount that actually makes some sense um we honestly don't know yet but i'm just going to work off the assumption that it's just a regular charge with some clever you know word usage here of the you know pirate theme um 
So seven mana for a four six, that seems like a garbage stat, right? But then you you know, because it's got charge, you're like, okay, well, Leroy's still cheaper. You're right, it is. But costs one less for each friendly pilot you have in play. Okay, so this basically says, Hi, I'm only good in a pirate theme gimmick deck. Now, I have no problem with that. In all honesty, stuff like this is what you need to make those theme decks a little bit more viable. But you also need a lot of other things, which currently, right now, as far as we know, pirates do not have. Now, if they introduce at least, you know, five new pirates, I might be able to see some of that actually becoming more viable. Um, Salty Dog's already good and a lot of things like that, but uh, that would require a lot of other stuff. Now, where would we most likely see this? Well, the obvious choice here is definitely going to be any class with a weapon because Captain Greenskin exists and it only makes sense that you play to those strengths. Um, however, that's not necessarily a requirement because Blingtron does exist, ladies and gentlemen. And let us not forget there's that shitty ass fucking pirate that actually reduces the durability of a weapon when you play him. Yes, and that's only one mana, and that's a pirate, and thus you can get more reduction here. Um, though, really, I'm I'm stretching so hard to make that viable. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I'm trying too hard at that point. Um, but yeah, wep weapon classes, you know, rogue, definitely. Paladin, oh god, help us. Um, warrior, definitely. Actually, Warrior gets kind of interesting, and so does Paladin, and, and so does Rogue. But let us not forget, oh, Shaman. Shaman is where I kind of cringe at this concept. And I cringe because, well, Whirlwind exists. Yes, but shit, aren't there better things in Whirlwind? Yes, there fucking are. But if you're going to go for a pirate theme, you go for a pirate theme. We're not talking about the most effective deck here. We're talking about, oh, I'm a fucking pirate. So, yeah. But I like the concept of it. I can't wait to hear, like, the sounds and the anime and see the animations and this, that, and the other. I think that'll be really, really cool. Um, but, hey, if pirate theme is where they're trying to push things and we get new pirate cards, you know, there's actually some really cool shit that came out in GVG that was pirate-centric, but just kind of meh, because well, the list of pirates that were available was absolute dog shit. But now, who knows? Could be good. Could be bad. We'll, we'll have to see. We'll definitely have to see. So far from what I'm seeing is like there are counters that already exist to a lot of these cards already in the game, but nobody takes them because their 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 value wasn't needed. But now with some of this, I think people are gonna have to reevaluate some of that. You know, like well, you want this in order to stop that fucking bullshit. But yeah, that's such a horrible play. Yeah, but you know, would you rather just die? Like, mm, good point. So I think there's definitely going to be, you know, a reevaluation period of previous cards that people have undervalued and seeing how that works in, in order to, you know, facilitate some of these newer designs. I mean, fuck shit, we're already seeing the possibility of Totemic Mike getting value. That card has never once had value. But now it does. And that's how expansions work. They take the old and make it new. And they take the new and make, and you can do some even more crazy shit when you incorporate it with older established mechanics and stuff that people overlook. So I'm loving this, guys. Uh, but those are the 15 cards. So if you like these videos, please like, subscribe, leave comments down below. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know what you think about the Grand Tournament and what to expect, all right? Because we're already seeing some really cool shit, all right? But what do you want to see? Let me know down in the comment section. Till then, this is Shiv saying, may Iron Jesus bless you, and I hope you all have a great, safe, wonderful week. Peace.